that is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today we are going to be doing an album deep dive into Entomb's first record, Left Hand Path. I'm so excited for this one. Entombed won one of our Sunday polls, and y'all have been so incredibly patient, and I really, really appreciate y'all. This has been very much uh, anticipated, so I'm very excited myself. Um, yeah, album deep dive. Um, I'm gonna have all of the social media links and merch links and stuff like that for Entombed if you are interested in um, seeing more of that stuff, you want to buy some t-shirts, CDs, that type of thing, or if you don't know Entombed and you like what you hear today, you can order their record down below in the description. So do go and check it out. Thank you so much to Earache Records for partnering me with me for this video. I'm super excited to listen to Entombed. So again, full album, deep dive into Left Hand Path. That is 12 songs this record came out from in 1990 june 4th 1990 so super excited um if you haven't subscribed to the channel please feel free to do so we would love to have you on this metal journey we are almost at 11,500 subscribers girl uh, we're growing uh join our discord the mosh pit down below um there's a link in the description that you can click and come and join our little metal family we have listening parties all the time we share pet photos art photos talk about memes talk about lots of metal and just hang out so if you want to join a really great community and you need friends come on and join <laughs> so without further ado let's go ahead and get into entombed left hand path so the first song is going to be the title track left hand path is our opener. Okay, first impressions, banger of an opening track, especially with this like really offsetting kind of like minor, it almost sounds like strings and this like screaming that's happening. Bubba, it's like super edge of your seat, unsettling, great way to open this record. And it's like super intense, but this like almost like halftime section here. Ooh, she's fat she's meaty and this like panned echo that they're doing to like enunciate these like la these like ending words in this verse i'm digging it i'm digging it so far this is quite the change from electric wizard i will say that i'm a little bit more awake for this one <laughs>
section. Oh, that was such an interesting way to pan it. Ooh, it was like the whole mix. It was almost like, here's the song, and then everything like kind of dropped out. And it's like that one guitar part just went super forward, just like right here, and that's all you could hear. And I think they got rid of basically everything else in the mix, but it was like such a nice way to kind of like bring everything forward. And then everything comes back into this sort of, I don't know, nice jammy part. Ooh. They're doing some things bouncy. She's got some bounce. <laughs> vibes like it's dude this halftime uh, oh oh she's in the pocket it's juicy and this like this key part oh, na, 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 this melody is so like I don't know it's creepy it's kind of Halloween-esque it's really nice and then they come in with the drums and really fill in this pocket it's just it's bouncy i like her a lot <laughs>
banger of a track, dude. All right. Jesus. If I heard this in the 90s when this first came out, I would have been like, pee in my pants, girl. Oh, man. Oh, we have another death. Why? Lars Goren Petrov. Legends never die. Your legacy will never be forgotten. Oh. No. Uh, why do people have to die? Why? Rest in power, LG Petrov. Ugh. Oh. Full dynamic range of CDs are great. Let's see. Killer riff and tone, stunning track. Yeah, really, really amazing song. Great opener, great solo, great vibe, great sections of like both the best of thrash as well as like in the pocket, like grooves. <laughs> Definitely really enjoyed this one. Left hand path. Let's go. 1990, huh? I'm getting a lot of different vibes. Kind of got some, like, I don't know. My Discord said that Entombed was, like, very influential, so I'm not exactly sure how or why yet. So please, enlighten me. Like, what's the backstory with Entombed? Um... I come to these reactions fully in a blind state, okay? So I'm not totally up to speed on like what their their backstory is. But um, they apparently have a very influential sound and already I can tell that with this first track. Um, I'm getting like some old school vibes. I mean, we're at 1990, so it's literally on the cusp, obviously. Brand new decade, but just after the 80s ended, so you're still getting some of that, like, 80s, like, the best of, like, the late 80s, like, death metal mixed with, like, okay, here we're, like, kind of exploring these newer styles of metal for the 90s, although that didn't come until a little bit more later in the 90s when that was kind of established, but it definitely seems like they're getting a sound. I am my own god, master slave, and I will be beyond the grave. No one will take my soul away. I carry my own will and make my day. I am my own god, see the truth beyond. Through endless lies thy kingdom come. Glorified wisdom, illumination tool. Self-deceit, it's the golden rule. I dip my forefinger in the watery blood of your impotent redeemer. And right over this, and right over his thorn torn brow, the true prince of evil. Ah! Oh! This is a quote from the Satanic Bible of Anton LaVey. I have that. I just received it um, in a metal unboxing. What man's created, man can destroy, bring to light. So this is an unreviewed annotation, but it says, Until this point, the song has been a frostbitten barrage of chaos and anger towards religion's tendency to repress self-determination. But then the lyrics take a positive turn. If mankind has had the power to create God and religion, we have the power to unite and destroy it. The song breaks into a synth interlude at 351, the theme from the 1979 film Phantasm. Okay, I was going to say it sounds like a cinematic sort of uh, soundtrack type thing. Followed by a soaring guitar solo by Helid, showing how the narrator's anger has subsided due to his faith in himself and the left-hand path. This iconic title track to Entomb's debut album is an ode to atheism and self-determination. Title refers to the left-hand path belief system, which is described in Anton LaVey's The Satanic Bible. Now I'm going to have to read that. Ugh. It's been sitting on top of Coda's crate, where it belongs. This denotes belief systems that focus on the individual 
rather than a higher power, the rejection of the status quo in favor of embracing freedom. Also, I love this album cover. It's very like Lord of the Rings, kind of Harry Potter, like the dark forest of Harry Potter though. I love this like uh, tombstone with this like gold dripping down. It's just like super enchanted foresty vibes. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So who did we lose? You're gonna have to let me know vocals hold on let's get the history is this lars hold on we have to do this i want to know the full story goran petrov okay otherwise known as lg petrov swedish singer man he just died in 2021 he wasn't very old he was only 49, dude. Hold on. What happened to you? <laughs> on August 9th, 2020, Petrov publicly announced on his GoFundMe page that he was battling an incurable form of bile duct cancer. And on March 8th, 2021 entombed ad i heard about this this is like another this is a project after entombed i've heard mixed reviews about how it is though announced via facebook that petro died cholangiocarcinoma bile duct cancer is a type of cancer that forms in the bile ducts wow that sounds extremely painful Symptoms of this include abdominal pain, yellower skin, weight loss. Wow. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know you could get cancer in those. That's like such a specific... Ah. That is such a specific cancer. Wow. Well, I hope you are rocking in heaven, Mr. Petrov. And I hope that your death wasn't super painful. May you rest in peace, good sir. Your your legend will live on. So we are gonna make this mem we're gonna make this video in memory of you, Mr. L. G. Petrov. So you have plenty of fans in the comments, I'm sure, who are just gonna be. I know, I see you. So we're dedicating this video to him. Okay. I just wanted to see what happened so I know the history. Next we've got the song Drowned. Vibes through this this track so far. <laughs> 
because they're, the beat of this song is it's relentless. She's just, she's throwing punches. So it's really, I, I like it, and I like that they use it to, like, emphasize ending lyrics for the verses, like I mentioned. In that first song, Left Hand Path, they were doing that same thing, so it seems like this is kind of, like, the flow of their music. <laughs> but they're really good about, like, their breakdowns and the placements of those. So same thing with the, the reverb that they're doing and this echoing effect, their breakdowns are like, mm. they just smash, 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 and then they're like, mm, slow smash, slow smash, and it's really nice. So it just like, it flows really nicely, and I also really liked how this track just slams you in the face right after the sort of like, um, melodic outro of Left Hand Path, um, because you kind of get comfortable in the state of, you know, the keys and that sort of, like, halftime beat that they're throwing, and then it kind of fades a little bit, and then just, like, we're right back at it again with this song, so, I like it. center pan and then as soon as it like ended it was here and then you had this like mm, this nice gritty guitar part that just kind of like sweeps in and just takes over the whole thing I don't know that's kind of I'm very visual with the whole pans <laughs> and I love it I love it um and I love the hard stop of this because I we're gonna get slammed in the face with the third song I already know it. that second riff in the beginning is so raw it's awesome 
Yeah, I'm listening to all the like full dynamic range versions because I like being able to hear everything. It sounds really, really good. I definitely am getting some Morbid Angel in this and um, I really like the grit of it so far. I'm digging the Entombed. I'm digging it. Oh, LG. You look so cool too. Okay, we're not gonna cry tears, y'all, okay? We're just gonna, we're going to be strong. Okay, you gotta be strong for me, all right? The Queen of Metals got you, okay? We're here together, we're in this together. Let's see. Also, if you hear snoring, it's my dog Spooner. Uh, sorry, bub. Try telling a bloodhound he can't snore, okay? It's like telling a lawnmower he can't mow grass. I don't know. As the claws of dark spell bind me and the light of the moon fills my eyes, I feel the presence even stronger. My invocation closer to rise, terrors beyond the human mind, awaiting me for thousands of years living in decay between the gates and in, then into the maze. Who was I to know that I would be on my way to an early grave? They're definitely really good about rhyming. They have like very poetic lyrics. They have taken my body and control of the mental where there is no memories. They darkened the thoughts of the mind. I remember the times I wanted to travel beyond. I am the reason why it has been it's good and it's bad. What are we talking about? Drown. Another masterpiece of Entombed. Great song, my favorite death metal album. Yeah, they're quickly becoming one of my favorite death metal bands. I can already tell I'm really, really going to enjoy this. I really like the sound. I really like what they're doing. Like I've mentioned with the breakdowns. Um, and I don't know, I really like his vocals too. I like his like deeper tones and the layers that he's doing. This is just kind of like my vibe when I want really good death metal girl. Mm. I could get me some down with Entombed. All right. So the next song is Revel in Flesh. And per usual, always let me know your thoughts on each of these songs if you want to. Um, if there's certain songs that don't have... Um, any like notes on it or whatever on like what it's about and you have an idea or know what it's about please let me know down below in the comments i want to know more information So while Drowned ends on a hard stop, they continue it with Rebel and Flesh. So if you're listening to it front to back, I feel like Drowned ends, hard stop, Rebel and Flesh starts, but it's like hard stop, hard stop, hard stop, and then you actually get into the song, which is like such a nice way of like just continuing the track. Um, yeah, really nice catchy riff. 
super, super nice. into it I'm so here for it I'm so here for it I could see myself working out to this song also this like I don't know the way they introduced this guitar almost was like like the same effect that you get from it going like brrr, on a keyboard but like on a guitar like he's going all the way up the fret <laughs> the neck <laughs> and uh, but they like kind of swept it this way and then kind of this way a little bit that's at least the kind of effect I got upon the first listen super super nice and then they go into this like mmm chuggy chuggy grabbing you by the throat and just going like <laughs> that's what I feel like the music is doing <laughs> interesting too because it was it was almost like very clean there wasn't any grit to it and it was just like Wah! like very like very clean in contrast to like his deeper vocals also the little mini solo they had was in two parts and I feel like it was a nice contrast between like a higher sort of solo higher note solo and then something a little lower that was panned here and he wasn't exploring too much with that solo either. He was kind of keeping it in like two notes and just going ding, 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 ding. But it was juicy. It was like in there. I kind of wanted him to do a little bit more with it. But where he was just working it in those two notes, in that little pocket of notes that he was in, it was quite nice. Um, ooh. I'm here for it. I'm digging it. I'm just seeing if there's anything. Brutal Riffs, oh, Metal Master Race. All right, nothing super valuable in the comments there, but that's okay. 
Revel in flesh. Um, if I have one word to describe this uh, record, it would just be relentless. Honestly, she's a bop and a half, honestly. So this is unreviewed, but it says a very culinary song from Entombed regarding cannibalizing a dead woman in front of another soon-to-be appetizer. Whoa. That escalated quickly. Where did they record this? Do, do, do. Sunlight Studios, Stockholm, Sweden. Dang. Swedes, man. I don't know what y'all are doing, but you're doing something right. Same thing with Florida. It must be the air. I don't know what y'all are doing, but metal just speaks to you, okay? <laughs> As your eyes are filled with horror, I lift up the corpse on the bench. You can't avoid the dismal sight. Its arms and legs I retrench. Retrench, huh? excavating its interior to get a hold of what's inside and as I drivel and belch you feel so damned reviled damn reviled this is like cannibal corpse lyrics Bubby I continue with laughter I drink the bowels room what is a room I don't need to know it's got something to do with the booty I don't need to know squeezing my hand through its mouth and further through its stomach to its womb. I feel like we escalated to somewhere. I feel like the last two songs were like a little bit deeper in meaning, although I'm not totally sure what Drowned was about. This one, we're getting to some funk. Of its once called body, there seems nothing to be left and you better prepare yourself for an equaling death, bars. Revel in flesh. Wow, bars! Uh, of it, of its once called body, there seems nothing to be left. You and you better prepare yourself for an equaling death. Revel in flesh. Wow. Poetry. Actual poetry. Yeah, it it is. It does sound like it's about somebody watching somebody else get chopped up, eaten. <laughs> Revel in flesh, pools of coagulated blood and rotten flesh by my side. Now I really need something more to kill another day in my life. Damn. All right, Entombed. I mean, I'm here for your lyrics. Definitely here for your lyrics. By the way, boys and women. MAC. Red lipstick, okay? This is called Retro Matte Ruby Woo. This is voted the best red lipstick ever. And it's the red lipstick that Taylor Swift uses. So if you are trying to find a gift for your girl or you just want some red lipstick, girl, okay, buy that. That is the end of my TED talk. <laughs> Um, okay, Revel in the Flesh. Okay, so next on the list is When Life Has Seized. Tempo, but I love 
I love those transitions. I like it. go super super fast and then we're gonna put this breakdown here and then we might either end on the breakdown or we'll go into a solo and then fast end so they they have these little pockets of this this breakdown so I'm kind of getting familiar with their their layout if you will um, but what's nice about this they're just really good about like building it up taking it down and then kind of like giving you stepping stones back up so while they break it down, kind of bring it back down to this little pocket, they do it for only like two, two bars, I would say, and then they bring in this double bass. And the double bass, the way it's like layered in this mix is it really is just like this bare minimum foundation. <laughs> it just is really keeping it going. Super nice layering piece. I really, really enjoy it. Let's continue. Yeah! just in this last minute here even when the first time I stopped they had the two bars slower and then they brought in the double bass and they did it for just such a short time and then they brought it down ew, even grittier after that and then they were picking it back up it was almost like three steps of like picking it up picking up speed before they go back into like the the actual thrash part of it and then this is the second song where I'm noticing sort of like a dueling banjo style guitar sort of thing. Um, this one, the guitars are pretty low in the mix, but you can hear them super thin like here. Kind of one pant here, doing a little thing, and then it comes here. And then here, and then here. And they think, I think they did that in Rebel in Flesh too. So you kind of have these like dueling guitars, and again, just playing around with these like tempos, these breakdowns. <laughs>
then you do a ton of those little transitions repeating that riff that was separating those little pockets in the verses nice and then you end with just ugh, the vocals also i'm noticing that they're doing a lot of like almost like animal style growls um there's a really good section where he was doing this and there's a few songs that we've listened to where he has those nice growls and it's you know for the theme if we're looking at like the album cover being this sort of like enchanted forest i guess you could say it's like sort of a i'm getting like a werewolf or like a bear like some sort of mythical creature style like growling if that makes sense i don't know if that's like weird but that's what i'm getting um yeah she heavy she's definitely heavy when life what is it called uh when life has seized Dude, this would be nuts. No, that's not what I want. This would be absolutely nuts for the 90s. Like, you freaking... That's all you have lyric-wise? When life has ceased, thou will decay. When life has ceased, we must turn away to change our life and seize thy own. They're living in a grave where their eyes are filled with mold. Ew. Demolition has begun with vested war machines. Imagine all the pain when life has seized. Bars. The mind is weak as it roams this desert hell. Lies of heaven is the fantasy you dwell. Rotting you roam this desert hell. Lies of heaven. Oh. That bars like poetry. Honestly, these boys are like actually poetic. <laughs> like that is just it's it's beautiful. The mind is weak as it roams this desert hell. Lies of heaven is the fantasy you dwell. Then they switch it up. Rotting you roam this desert hell. So they're doing again roams this desert hell you roam this desert hell and then they repeat the line that's just really really nice poetry i'm so here for entombed honestly um this band is surprising me i also think i'm just a really big fan of death metal honestly <laughs> so i mean we did start with uh you know cannibal corpse so what do we really expect but I like what we're listening to so far. So we're plowing through. We got a couple shorties here. Supposed to Rot is our next song. Bring back albums with like capital letters starting the title of the songs, please. Okay, I don't know who started this whole trend of like lowercase lettering for all of your songs, but I'm over it now and I would like to have my capital letters back please and thank you okay so let's get into supposed to rot Just teased 
to the solo. Bestie, okay? Can we talk about this for a second? Whoa! And then that's it? That's all you give me? I will say I'm not a huge fan of how much reverb he has on his vocals. I feel like it's a lot more noticeable and more so than the previous songs. It sounds like he's in a cave though, so maybe that kind of matches the theme, but I feel like it kind of muddies his vocals, just my personal opinion. But so far I like the groove. supposed to rot? Hold on. Supposed to rot. Because he said you were supposed to rot. Yeah. Wow. That, I really like that line. Like, before even reading this, it's almost like he killed somebody and then it's like they got resurrected or somehow and he was like no you were supposed to rot yeah and then they kind of like fade out and like leave it open it's almost like an interlude song is so short it just seems like this fun little banger but I feel like we're getting into some chapters here it's like we're just switching things up we're moving we're moving into something different stubborn old worthless hag simply had nothing to give I couldn't stand your eternal nag. You didn't deserve to live. So I went to the stove and took a pork knife, very specific, and stabbed it into your head. Wow, we're really escalating here. Buried you in the fruit cellar. I was glad because I thought you were dead. But the maggots didn't feast on your body. You didn't get moldy as I thought. And still I can hear that nag in my head. You were supposed to rot. I kind of like this because like I mean lyrically we're we're talking about some like rough pickings you know but you could say it's like this person like they really hate this one person and you know you cut them out of your life so let's say and like you just wanted to see them like downfall but all they're doing is succeeding and you're like you were supposed to rot <laughs> you were supposed to not succeed <laughs> now she haunts me day and night a haunting i can't forget the deed was a cold-blooded homicide a murder i regret oh you regret it huh but still she's the same old hag <laughs> old hags don't change and still my life has turned the same. Isn't there anything to set me free from this wicked pain? You were supposed to rot. Oh, so he's almost like feeling remorse. It's almost like two vibes. Stubborn old worthless hag, you didn't deserve to live. I killed you. You were supposed to rot, but the maggots didn't feast on you. It's like angry, but they didn't want you. Like death didn't want you and then this it's like now it haunts me that that didn't happen and i can't forget it and i regret even doing that it's almost like i regret hating you you know but you were supposed to rot you were supposed to fail is essentially what i'm thinking lyrics are a clear reference to psycho okay I just was digging more deep into it than I guess I needed to, where the main character, Norman Bates, after years of torment from his mother, kills her and her lover and keeps her body in the fruit cellar. Nice. I've never seen Psycho before. 
but I'd be down. You know, Moshtober is upon us. If you even so much as start, okay, so the insects outside of my house are so dang loud, girl, I tell you what, sometimes I have crickets out here that you could just, I hear from all the way across my house. <sighs> Make me mad. Okay, we're just going to keep recording this. Let's go to our next little shorty song here, but life goes on. In tuned, but life goes on. All right, let's go. continuing story I wonder if this album is a concept album it doesn't seem like it's a concept album but it seems like we're hitting a pocket of songs when life is seized supposed to rot but life goes on rebel I, rebel and flesh was just a fun one but I feel like we're like but life goes on is kind of like a part two to supposed to rot maybe Seems like it. There's nothing so far that I've heard in this song though that's keeping me interested. Life is your work and track in my opinion um didn't hear anything that was like super memorable <laughs> i'm gonna just keep it real but i got the animal vocals um i had a thought 
and now it's left me. I had a thought, but now it's not here. Life goes on. Is there any notes on this? Nothing on this song, huh? Hmm. But life goes on. Yeah, it just seems like kind of a filler or an interlude sort of thing. A rotten stench surrounds another ended life. Maggots infested the rotten flesh. I, I, or something tells me this is like a part two to the rotted, what is it called? Supposed to rot. I feel like this is just a part two to supposed to rot. Rotten stench, maggots, again, we're referencing maggots infested in the rotten flesh. Is that the way you want to die, decomposed? Don't want to live in a decaying shell? Well, why should I go to heaven? And who's to, stay, and who's to say I'll enter hell? I also feel like we talked about this, we referenced this a little bit in Supposed to Rot. Um, yeah. Dead, deceased, but life goes on. I will be the one who won. My charred body will decay, but my soul will be floating away. Visually a corpse, but what's inside my head? Don't consider I once was deceased. So I guess I'll come back from the dead. Dying my death in relentless aggrieve. Ooh, nice word. Dead and put down in a wooden box just can't be my destiny. Dead, deceased, but life goes on. I will be the one who won. Continue to seek and you will see that life is your worst enemy. Dude, bars, I'm telling you. These boys, the poetry that they have. Continue to seek and you will see that life is your worst enemy. Ugh, no comments on this either. Y'all. Uh... Mm. Alright, not the strongest one. I think that's like the weakest one that we've heard so far. Um in my personal opinion. I feel like it's just a little bit more of like a filler song. Um, and instrumentally there wasn't anything that really kept me um, coming back, but that's okay. It's very rare that we have albums. I don't know if it's the same thing for you as it is for me, but it's rare that you have albums where there's not at least one skip or one song that you don't listen to, you know? Um, and typically how I grade albums based on their greatness is if like, if I can have at least two thirds of the record be like bangers. Positions, the Positions album by Ariana Grande, I know it's pop, but girl, I listen to it every day, okay? There's only like three songs on that album that just ugh, are like, really two that are just trash awful. Awful, awful, never want to hear ever again. And that I consider to be really good. Um, it's rare that there's like 100% of the tracks are bangers for an album. Um, so what are your thoughts on But Life Goes On? Do you think it's a banger? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What's your thoughts? Next, we have Bitter Loss, track number seven. This song is literally four minutes and 20 seconds. 420 just plays.
expressions, girl. Pulling everything back and giving you just the base. I don't know about you, but the bass has a special place in my heart, okay? Same thing with the drums. And that is one thing that I ain't hearing very well through these mixes is the bass. I feel like she's muddy, she's buried, so it was really nice to be able to hear it. There's only been this song, and I think the end, no, it wasn't the end of Drowned. I think it was Rebel in Flesh that they ended with the bass, just kind of like the grit of the bass. Oh. Oh. too doing a lot of layers because they're because he's doing this like almost like not clean singing but he's holding out the notes and then he has the other layers the other vocals come in so it's he was able to record one and then do the other in a separate recording and have it be sort of like this again dueling banjo style vocals and I really like how he did this sort of like moaning vocal uh, sort of thing it really adds the effect i'm noticing that that's like something like this sort of pained vocal is a is a running theme through a lot of these songs i first noticed it in my iowa reaction uh, with slipknot was the the singer i think his name's Corey. i'm terrible with names he did a lot of like painful singing vocals as well, just like he was just an agony. And that's kind of what you're getting in this vibe. Also, I really love the beat. It's just like, oh, it's relentless. And it almost makes you seem, it almost seems like it wouldn't go the direction that it does, but it does. And it's kind of like, oh, 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 we are, we are doing this. And then, but mm, once you get it, you're like in the pocket. Again, they're really great about creating these groovy pockets for every single song. I really, really
don't want to re-listen to it. All right, bub. Fire. Super fire. Super in the pocket. Bitter loss. Banger after banger. That is what this entire record is proving to have. It is banger after banger. Uh, any notes? Nothing, of course. Um... Blinded eyes crash course with reality, subconscious lie. Who did they really kill? Shattered hope, a slave to his master, he starts thirsting for the things he may never near. Interesting. Interesting way to end this. The falling tears, falling from your sorrow, you wonder why they'll rip you all to shreds. Bomb the poor if that's what living means to thee. What are we talking about? They realize that religion wants them dead. Interesting lyrics here. In terms of like, because they've been pretty like, very poetic and definitely rhyming with certain lyrics. This one's kind of interesting. Especially because, like, they just throw in this word near in this first one. Some of you might not care, but I just think it's interesting. And then this second stanza, you wonder why they'll rip you all to shreds. They realize... So some of you might not care about, like, the lyrics as much, but I think it's interesting how there's no real rhyming in this first section, and they've been very poetic with their lyrics previously and definitely having like pretty clear rhymes at least when you're like reading it but to throw in this like near with nothing that it rhymes with is kind of interesting whereas in this second stanza you wonder why they'll rip you all to shreds they realize that religion wants them dead i think that's just that's interesting especially because there's nothing in these next lines that even rhymes with near i don't know I just find that interesting. Imagine their emotion for someone's need to kill. For some other religion but yours, it's just the death of your religion that makes you cry. It's just your own bitter loss. Interesting. You. Blinded eyes, no more consolation. Subconscious lie won't set you free. Your falling tears, our own extinction. Abandoned stories, now everything can be seen. It's just your own bitter loss. Interesting. I don't really know what we're talking about. Lyrics, Nick Anderson and Alex Halid. Wow, the drummer wrote this, huh? Who's like the main lyricist then? Is it Nick? It's interesting that he's, I don't know, I guess... Drummers aren't usually lyricists. Normally, it's like either the vocalist or the guitarist who does it. I think it's interesting that he wrote this song. It could be that he wrote this. Oh, he also helped with bass too, huh? What is the situation we... Oh, and then Ulf also did guitars? And Alex, who's also the guitarist, did lyrics so this is probably just like a song that the drummer Nick and Ulf wrote and then maybe the other ones are written by LG and something like that because it, it feels like it has a much different vibe than any of the other ones lyrically speaking um, it's just not as poetic um, and there's certain like breaks in the stanzas with these comma placements and stuff that feel different than the other ones. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but I don't know. As a lyricist myself, I notice these things, so... Okay, 
we're gonna continue. We're just gonna go right into morbid devourment, I think is what it is, yeah. Chuggy, like such a great groove. I could hear myself drumming along to this in my car on the steering wheel, girl. Super in the pocket. Yeah! possible and the guitar sounds so nice in this mix and they're super forward and just like I don't know the tone of the guitars is just it's perfect and it's just like I it's one endless mosh it's just oh, I love it I really really love it <laughs> Slayer, a little bit. Second, 
Uh, I wish that they played around with the double bass a little bit more. However, that being said, the placement that they've been putting it in is pretty nice. They sprinkle it in. It's not in, a, it's not in all of their songs. I think this is like the third song that they've actually had the double bass in. And they're flirting with it. They're just really barely giving it to you. Um, but I like the placement of where it's at in this song. Um, also, this beat here... It's like, oh, mm, 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 mm. it's like, I don't know, it's so groovy, but it's almost like they're skipping a beat, but they're, or they're like holding it out. They're like, ba -na -da -da, ba -na -na -da -da. so it's like, you can kind of vibe with it. I don't know. Great at creating these little grooves, these pockets. I keep saying it, but it's just bouncy. This whole album is banger after banger. There's really only been like one song on here so far that's been kind of a dud. Um, but we're we're talking about Taylor Swift bangers here, but like death metal and tomb. <laughs> his like deeper guttural rolls and his like animal noises <laughs> morbid devourment mm -hmm. and his I think I spelled it right Ugh. you don't have this song on here how do you not have morbid devourment by Entune? Oh. Wow, a song that's not on here. All right, fine. Let's go ahead and look up the old school way devourment lyrics. Oh, big old thing of question marks in here. A tumor of mold inherits you inside, spreads in you, soon to putrefy. Wait, there was something about this song though, right? Hold on, I think it's this one's missing lyrics. That's why it's not in here. Left hand path. I think that's why. There was one that said missing lyrics. Yes, that's right. Okay, what's the sitch on this? Have yet to be transcribed. Why is it missing lyrics? Ooh. 
Convulsion sets in relentless a grieve, stench of decay starts possessing visibility. Heading for death, flesh turns out to be mold. About these symptoms, you were never told, decomposed to shreds, bodily debris, coagulated blood, molded flesh, surrounded by disease. Hold on. What's the story? Missing lyrics. I'm going to have to just, like, do my own research. I don't want to waste your time. But, yeah, there's, like, on Genius it said there was missing lyrics for that song. So if you know the backstory for Morbid Devourment's missing lyrics, please let me know. I would be very interested to hear the story because I know that seemed to be a theme. What was it with Megadeth, right? They had some missing lyrics. Um... And I forget what happened. I forget. I think they had some, like, audio tapes of their songs and they just got, like, lost somewhere. Um, oh, God, I can't even imagine what that was like. Mm -hmm. I would feel so bad uh, if, I'm, if we're, like, right in the middle of recording a record, especially, like, your debut record. Um, and you're like, yo, I definitely lost that song that we were working on for hours in the studio so I don't remember what <laughs> what was what so <laughs> we're gonna do abnormally deceased now mm -hmm. has a different vibe than any of the other ones in terms of like the guitar tone if that makes sense like it seems like his guitar tone sounds more like he's playing more major chords or it just sounds more positive or brighter if that makes sense at all whereas the other ones seemed a little bit more darker and moodier this one seems a little just the vibe is a little different <laughs>
song in my opinion I'm gonna keep it real another filler um, I feel like entombed in my personal opinion shines more with these like longer songs um, although supposed to rot was really good but like life goes on um, and this abnormally deceased I think those are the two weakest songs so far um, and maybe it's also because I, I might be more just not super into the shorter in your face type things, but there's just nothing there that's grabbing me, which they've done stuff in their shorter songs that they, that has grabbed me. So, um, ah, I'm normally deceased. So we were reading the lyrics of Abnormally Deceased then. So, oh, so it's the case of like, morbid devourment literally doesn't have tight lyrics. That's the situation. Whereas like, Megadeth had missing lyrics, but they like had parts of them. Maybe, because there's a question mark here. So maybe Abnormally Deceased is also missing lyrics? What is the backstory? Y'all are going to have to tell me. So it looks like Nick wrote this too. Then, then they had Leaf. Who's Leaf? Helped them. Interesting. So I'm guessing LG was not much of a writer for the band. He really just did vocals. Um, it's so interesting that their drummer writes like most of their songs. We just don't see that too often. Infected body slowly putrefies. Okay. I'm very curious what the backstory is with Morbid Devourment and Abnormally Deceased and what, what the story is with the missing lyrics. So if you know definitely write something in the comments because that's super super interesting to me um i mean this is like 30 years 30 years ago at least so i wonder when they lost the lyrics because like it could have been right before the release of their debut album which is like so unfortunate or it could be like years and years later Oh, it's like my worst fear. <laughs> Definitely, I think I'm normally deceased and butt life goes on or just kind of throwaway tracks. Nothing super shiny holding me to it. <clears throat> um, just very in your face, traditional death metal, which, you know, I feel like depending on the vibe, I would be into it. But um, there it's just not grabbing me immediately. So we're going to go into our 10th song on this record, which is The Truth Beyond. Death 
and a little like Camp Corpse and Megadeth, a little bit of Slayer. That's kind of what I'm getting with Entombed. Also, they flirted with the double bass, but I keep saying it, but the reason why those other two songs are kind of like, eh, not really hitting it for me is because Entombed shines with the way they build their pockets, their grooves. They really shine with the grooves in this whole record and it's just bop after bop and they have sections where you could really just like mm, snap your fingers and I feel like when they don't have those elements at least on this record I feel like it loses its momentum in a way um, but I really like the pocket they're building <laughs> church bell sound effect that they added to it as well another kind of like hint at slayer it, i don't know it makes me think of vampires which makes me think of slayer <laughs> um yeah i really like it don't know how i feel about the megaphone filter but i'm into it kind of i'm open to it <laughs> with his vocals I love the maniacal laughter I love like all of his like animal noises and I love that he keeps ending his songs with just like oh like a guttural not like a guttural but like a a grunt and they just like reverb it out or have it kind of pan and it's just it's fun it's a cool way to like transition the songs um the truth In tuned. Nothing on this song either. Man, not a lot of people got anything on this. Ulf, Nick, it keeps saying that LG has no writing creds on this. Dang, Bob. I'm sure he does, but it also could be possible that he doesn't, because some 
some musicians just aren't writers, you know? They're just like, no, nah, I'll just be more vocalists, you know? People put to death in the name of God and blood run red in an eternal flood. The word has been spread throughout the centuries, millions of corpses lying in the cemeteries. Really cool way to rhyme centuries and cemeteries. Almost doesn't, but kind of does. Reek of Christianity, down of obscuration, the birth of insanity and death to liberation. Lord of evolution, enslavement emperor, root of all evil, it is the holy terror. God the Almighty, the creator of earth, devote your life to this holy writ, the key to your rebirth. Bars. And if you've been a believer of justice and brave, so what? It shall be written on your grave. Ooh. Isn't there something about that on the... And then there's like a grave. No, there's no connection to it, but I really like that. Bell summoned its slaves to mass in the darkest hour to devour the body of Christ. The blood feast shall increase their power. Chalices filled to the edge with blood, drawn from holy veins, tearing his stomach open and revel in the shredded remains. We're talking about some deep, dark stuff, Bubba. No comments. Nothing. Whole lot of nothing on this song. Bubba, I tell you what. There's a lot more that you could say about the song. But oh well. Oh well, that's fine. Um, either way, still poetic. Not as poetic as some of the first songs, you know. Um, but that's okay. That is okay. So we got two more. The next one is called Carnal Leftovers. <laughs> what a title. Okay. We're just getting in our leftovers. Heating some of those up. Oh, Bubba. It's not the music. It's almost 10 p.m. here, so I'm just getting tired. But do not worry. We are going... To make it through okay if you're still watching know that I love you very much and I appreciate you all right you got time for two more y'all carnal leftovers <gasps> you don't have the new versions of these oh fine I'll listen to the original one transitions okay let me tell you this song, we're only a minute 24 into the song and there's so many different transitions and riffs and things that they're doing that I'm like trying to catch <laughs> and it's just like poof, it's just over my head it's like one thing and then it's there and then another thing and then it's gone <laughs> really nice I like this like -na 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 -na. it's almost like a little walk down um, guitar riff that they're doing right before his vocals and then they keep introducing it as like a break in this verse. 
it's really nice. It's like, uh, it just feels kind of mega deathy and almost like a, a positive note change, if that makes sense. It's like, it's just a really nice balance of this little walk. <laughs> redeemed yourself with this song i mean we're we're towards the end of the album so i would expect there to be you know i mean you're gonna have some duds you're gonna have some things that don't aren't as strong as like the beginning tracks it is a debut that is how it goes sometimes okay it's nothing nothing bad it's just that's how it goes so i mean we're coming to the end of the record so we so i'm very curious to hear especially like what the last song of the record is going to be um so let's see carnal leftovers i don't expect there to be any notes there's not who would have thought um you remember when he stuck that hair curler up her wet and juicy hair pie man that escalated quickly he was laughing like hell while he, she was screaming in pain. It was the way he wanted her to die. Wet and juicy hair pie is quite the way to say cooter, okay? Carnal leftovers on the floor. If you had to come a little earlier, you would have seen some gore. Oh, man, I feel like he's telling guests at a party after, like, they see this poor woman's dead body and he's like oh well if you'd come a little earlier you would have actually seen the gore staring down he took her breath leaving a carnal stench behind that's not the first time we've seen carnal stench i think being used throughout this album and he'll be curious to search for clues carnal leftovers hard stop period the only thing to find Carnal leftovers on the floor. If you had come a little earlier, you would have seen some gore. Oh, I love it. It's almost like cannibals, like at dinner. Staring her down, like a carnal stench. The only carnal leftovers is the only thing to find. They have some like fun topics throughout this record. Rebel in Flesh is definitely one that I'm like really connecting with i don't know i feel like i had a moment with that song <laughs> but and left hand path was is just yeah that's such a strong song okay before we get too carried away with my final thoughts let's go into premature autopsy our last track the closer of this album let's see what we're in for and get this going
vocals are so different in this song. Like, way, way, way different than any of the other songs. Literally every single one of the songs is totally different vocally than this one. This one has, like, a lot of layered vocals, but it just sounds like a totally different vocalist, too. It sounds more, like, monstrous and guttural and gritty. It's totally, totally different than... <laughs> of this song just like it's so in your face and then all of these stops is they just let the guitar ring out but let the guitar but guitar playing but guitar playing all just like right here great way to just like kind of switch it up break it up a little bit track but there's so much going on it's like relentless and this this solo and the vocals dude i have thoughts about the vocals well let's finish the song sneaked in there okay so let's obviously talk about the elephant in the room which is the vocals okay and I'm gonna do it while I reapply some lipstick girl okay you're just gonna have to watch 
Uh, what do you think about the vocals for this song? I think it's interesting that they like held it out. I know I use this as a primer. It's not the usual one. I use two because I'm a special lady. Okay, not that you care. Anyway, the distorted vocals for this song. I feel like it's really interesting that literally all of the other songs, all 11 other songs on this record have just the typical LG vocals with his like reverb, his animal gutturals, just the standard stuff. It's all the same. It's all standard, you know, in the pocket for what the sound is. This is totally different. This is almost like the voice of Satan almost. It's like distorted, layered. It could be just like one vocal track that he did and then they just added some sort of distortion or effect to it or it could be multiple um, vocal takes and kind of doubles um, to create this effect. It's really, really interesting that they waited until the absolute last song on the record to do that. Um, and it kind of makes me think that, it kind of makes me want to, makes me excited for the next record, if that makes sense. Like if I had heard this for the first time in 1990 when it came out, I would have been like, ooh, I want them to explore that vocal effect more. So I would be more excited for the next record. And I'm curious to, to hear if their next record, which we are going to do a deep dive on, has those sort of distorted vocals because that is really that's a really special sound um and that's just a unique way to do it um yeah i feel like that's very interesting interesting way to end your record for sure um premature autopsy let's quickly look at these lyrics and then i'm gonna let you go um, because I know y'all have been so good. The song is an instrumental, but it's not. There is not, though. There's literally lyrics for it. Let's look at these lyrics. Goodness. It's a bonus track. There's no lyrics for it. Making me look on these weird websites for it. All right. Well, apparently the internet thinks it is an instrumental. So I don't know. There's some funky things with this record in terms of like the things that we're finding. <laughs> because what was it? Morbid Devourment has missing lyrics and apparently doesn't have lyrics at all instead of just a couple verses um and then but then oh which one is it but then abnormally deceased also is missing lyrics but has more lyrics than morbid devourment and premature autopsy is considered to be an instrumental but it obviously isn't and is considered to be a bonus track yet that's not what I'm finding um all right you know we're fine we're here we're doing it so let's do the final thoughts okay final thoughts on this record um left hand path I think is a very strong debut record for a death metal band in the 1990s. I don't know the history of Entombed. All I know is that they um, are very influential to the genre and made some big waves and inspired a lot of future metal artists um, after they released some of their records. So I would say this is a really, really strong opening record. Um, they talk about some various different things. I think I connected the most with supposed to rot. I think just cause I came up with my own deep meanings for that song. Left hand path. The title track is definitely just such a strong opener. Spitter, stop itching your dang self. Uh, it's such a strong opener. Honestly, it really is. Um, Rebel in flesh too was a really fun song. Um, I love the 
I love all of the I love all the songs. There's only two that I didn't really like. Um, but Life Goes On I felt was pretty boring. And same thing with um, The Truth Beyond and Abnormally Deceased were kind of like, okay. I feel like there were some tracks in the middle of this record that I feel like um, were all right. Um, I think definitely, I wish I could go back to this page that I had all the timestamps. Here we go. Yeah, I'm, I feel like But Life Goes On and Abnormally Deceased were the weakest ones. Um, I'm curious to know what the backstory is between Morbid Devourment and Abnormally Deceased. Carnal Leftovers, I feel like, was okay. Premature Autopsy was a really interesting and strong closer. Um, I'm also curious as to understanding the choice in using the vocal distortion effect just for that song because that's so particular um overall a really strong album i think that entombed just from this record alone really shines the most when they add pockets when like i've said i've said it multiple times but when they add a change, like the, the songs that I felt were the weakest when, was when there were no changes and it was just your typical standard death metal. Um, and I feel like there's certain bands that we've had on this channel that do it a little bit better. Um, but when they, they really shine when they switch it up and they add these like nice breakdowns or they they mess with the pace of the song or when they have I don't know just like something different they did a lot of like dueling banjo sort of guitar type things um as well as with the vocals they played around with it a lot too with the reverb um I feel like that's where I stand that's where I stand the my favorite songs I would say are definitely Left Hand Path, Supposed to Rot, I really liked Rebel and Flesh, Drowned was also really good. Um, and I think the weakest, like I've said, But Life Goes On and Abnormally Deceased, I feel like were the weakest. Same with Carnal Leftovers. Um, although I liked the lyrics, they kind of played around with that sort of Cannibal Corpse style lyrics um, in Carnal Leftovers. Same with like supposed to rot and revel in flesh. I feel like those are really fun songs. So those are my thoughts. Um, that's the record. That's, that's the video really. So I want to know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on left hand path as a whole? Um, a lot of people really, really love this album and think that this is like such a strong album in the history of death metal. So I want to know your thoughts. What are your favorite songs? What are your least favorite songs? Do you agree with any of the points that I've made? Um, do you know any of the backstory, like I've said, on any of these songs, especially like the missing lyrics thing? Um, and then the vocal effect for premature autopsy. Do you know anything about that? I want to know your thoughts. And also, let me know what the backstory is with Entombed and their influence for the genre as a whole. Um, because I, I, through this metal journey, I'm learning all of these bands and how they've influenced future bands, like the bands that are coming out now. So what is Entomb's influence? What is their mark, their musical stain for this genre, if you will? Um, I really want to know. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to know more about the band, if you want to check out their albums, purchase their albums, get some merch, um, and that type of thing, you can check out all of those links. I'll have all of their social media and different things like that down below so you can check it out. Please go and do so and support Entombed and also support Earache Records. Thank you so much for partnering with me on this video and 
just being awesome. Honestly, Earache is really amazing. They also partnered with me on Carcass too. So they're super cool. Go and check them out and um, support a record label, you know? Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, join our Discord. There's all the information's in the description. And also, if you want to send something to be featured in a metal unboxing video, I very highly encourage you to do so. Um, I have my PO box down in the description also. I do about one or two metal unboxing videos a month. Um, and we just open up CDs, t-shirts, DVDs. We do like books and just cassette tapes and all kinds of stuff. And Sometimes I'll read a fan letter or two, and it's just a fun time. Just get to, like, hang out with y'all, and uh, we just get to open packages together. Well, you get to see me suffer trying to open packages, okay? That's really what it comes down to. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and supporting the channel, supporting me as a content creator. Um, honestly, I couldn't do any of this without you. So, um, thanks for being here. Um, wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, I love you. Stay safe, take care, and I will see you in the next video.